This is Campbell's 7th edition Biology, Chapter 43 on the Immune System. Uh, so basically, immune system is the ability to, or the need to defend itself from uh, various pathogens uh, that you'll encounter in the environment uh, that can cause disease and, and damage. Uh, so there's innate immunity and there's acquired immunity. These both have evolved over time. Um, innate immunity is essentially there before any exposure happens. Uh, you have it from the time of birth. Uh, it's your automatic immune system. Um, and these are non-specific defenses. A uh, quick example that we'll talk about is skin. Okay. Uh, acquired immunity sometimes is called adaptive immunity, but this is essentially immunity that you gain after you're exposed to some uh, pathogen or toxin, and you um, put together a very specific response to kill that specific pathogen. So this is an overall idea of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, innate immunity includes both these external defenses like skin that I mentioned, your mucous membranes, and also the secretions that come out, uh, such as, let's say, hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Um, the internal defenses, still part of innate immunity, you have them since birth, are uh, some phagocytic cells, uh, which we will talk about, like macrophages or dendritic cells, um, some antimicrobial proteins, like the protein complement system, <clears throat> uh, your inflammatory response uh, tied to histamine, of course, and then uh, NK cells, or natural killer cells, um, and we'll talk about those as well. Here, acquired immunity, your humoral response, that's antibodies with uh, B cells. And then cell-mediated response is cytotoxic lymphocytes, which are killer T cells, if you like to call them instead. So, uh, innate immunity. Um, when pathogen enters, you have to be able to attack. So, first of all, its ability to enter is a, can be difficult. Uh, which is good because you have intact skin and also mucous membranes, and these mucous membranes are, have a very viscous fluid uh, that can trap the microbes. So this is basically your saliva um, or the, line, the mucus that's produced in your stomach or uh, vaginal secretions or things along that line. Uh, you also have these uh, cells uh, that line your trachea called uh, ciliated epithelial cells, and ciliated epithelial cells have these teeny tiny hairs, these cilia, that uh, beat opposite the direction of uh, entry into your body. So they help to move dirt particles and microbes up away from the lungs, back up to the mouth and towards the nose, and are uh, in part the production of uh, boogers. Now, um, this, the skin and the mucous membranes make for a very difficult environment for these microbes. Um, the skin, in part, also because it secretes or creates a pH between 3 and 5, which is slightly acidic um, and difficult to colonize. So if you took a pH strip and you put it up to your skin, uh, you left it there for a little bit, it would turn a uh, reddish color, orangish reddish, because it's acidic. Uh, your skin also produces some secretions that include lysozyme. Lysozyme is an enzyme that digests cell walls of uh, a lot of bacteria, uh, much the same that uh, you have in your lysosomes of your cells. Now, internally, still part of the innate immune system, we have some uh, phagocytes uh, that are a type of white blood cell. It's a category. There's phagocytes and there's lymphocytes. Phagocytes ingest invading microorganisms. They wrap their membrane around them and consume them, take them in uh, to eliminate them. And then there's also uh, the inflammatory response that is tied to phagocytes. They, they, in part, trigger the inflammatory response. So one type of phagocyte is called a macrophage. It's the largest of all the... Uh, phagocytes, uh, and it's all over the body. And macrophages, one of the important things are that they are the first white blood cell on the scene. So they're always flowing through your blood, and whenever ever there's uh, exposure to any pathogen or anything unusual, macrophages are the first there. Here you see they have these pseudopodia, fake feet, that wrap envelop, or envelop around these microbes uh, and bring them in to create a little vacuole, and then this vacuole will merge with the lysosome. And the uh, lysozyme and, and enzymes that are inside this lysosome will merge and, and break down these uh, microbes, which can then get excreted out through exocytosis. So the lymphatic system is essentially all the tubing and organs that make up your uh, immune system, which uh, includes lymph vessels or lymphatic capillaries that you see here, that, and they're tied back and forth with the blood um, near the heart and in ver at, uh, various organs. And here you also have lymph nodes which you may be able to feel in your neck, for example, when you are sick. They enlarge um, because they are flooding with fluid and um, uh, 
building additional cells. Um, one aspect of lymph nodes is that you can see the entry points. There's three or more entry points into one lymph node, but there's fewer exit points. Uh, and the point of this is to essentially create a traffic jam of fluid inside the lymph node to slow the flow down and to give ample time for the white blood cells located in the uh, lymph node to treat or attack any pathogens that are in that fluid. Uh, there's also part of the innate immune system called the protein complement system, which is about 30 proteins or so. Now keep in mind that this textbook is from some, I don't know, five years ago now. Uh, and there's probably mo been more than 30 proteins identified that I don't know about. But um, in any case, the complement system works in a variety of ways, um, uh, including the uh, tying to lysing of invading cells um, by tagging them, essentially, binding to their membrane and tagging them for destruction, and also to help trigger inflammation, to bring more fluid to a site of uh, infection. Now, one protein complement, one protein of the complement system is called interferon, a very important one, uh, which we know provides specific defense against viruses. Uh, and they help to activate or bring in macrophages to consume those viruses. Uh, interferon is an interesting one because we have isolated interferon, um, and it actually took uh, a group 17 years to identify and to find interferon. They worked on that same thing over and over and over for 17 years, pretty crazy stuff. And we'll take a pause on this one.